Hey guys, what's up? It's Siphon here, and welcome to episode 3 of Warframe, the Ultimate Beginner's Guide. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about parkour, we're going to be talking about progressing to Venus, we're going to be talking about a shit ton of things, which you'll need to know to progress within Warframe. We're also going to be, like, almost 110% completing Earth, like, doing all the things that we can do on it before we progress on. Things like that there. Now, I'm not going to be showing you, like, every single thing, because that would just take a super duper long time to do on Earth, but I'm basically just going to inform you guys about it, provide you guys with assets, which will allow you to sort of track your progress and different things like that there. So, um, basically, what we're going to look at first is our parkour and improving that ability, because that will allow us to basically, you know, complete our missions a lot faster. So, if you guys remember the codex, go ahead and go over to that there, press training, and then press the advanced movement tab, and in the bottom right-hand corner, there's going to be a replay tutorial button. Go ahead, press that there. Even though you haven't done a tutorial based around this, um, it still says replay for some reason. And this basically allows you to um, hone your parkour skills, right? But it doesn't teach you how a veteran player parkours, but, you know, it, it still informs you of the things that, you know, you can, you know, do in Warframe, I guess. Um, but I'm going to teach you guys a way to parkour, which is, you know, this doesn't teach you. So it's going to be a lot better. It's going to be a lot faster. So just pay attention, I guess. So whenever you're watching a, a more experienced player play the game, you'll see that they run around and they do things like this here and they kind of just chain all their movement together. Now, this tutorial doesn't make that super apparent, right? You know, you, you can basically ignore half of this tutorial if you just learn that sort of combo right there because you don't have to do half the stuff that this tutorial tells you to do because let's face it, you can just kind of cover the gap by jumping a little bit and chaining a few moves together, right? So, what these veteran players are doing is they're sprinting, and then they're going into a slide, all right? Now, the slide is probably the most important move in this entire combo because it is what sets up the momentum um, for you to be able to sort of parkour a, a super long range, right? So, it gives you the sort of, you know, the friction that you need to sort of propel yourself forward, right? So, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sprinting, going into a slide, and then double jumping, okay? That's sort of the first little bit of the combo. It's super simple, super easy, you know, super easy to get used to, right? So once you're jumping in the air, you can do a roll, right? And that propels you forward a little bit more, okay? So running, sliding, jumping, rolling. Easy peasy. Just keep on repeating that there. Try to get it done. Make it muscle memory. Rebind your key bindings. Myself, personally, I have my slide or my crouch bound to shift. Uh, my rolling or my sprint button. Okay, well, my sprint button is bound to my mouse 5, and then my rolling is bound to double tapping mouse 4 on my Razor Death Adder here. So that'd be the bottom uh, side button on my Death Adder, and then my sprinting is the top side button on my Death Adder. Um, so that is pretty much that there, and then obviously my jump is my, my space bar here. So, you know, I would be running by holding down mouse 5, sliding, pressing shift, and then double jumping using space bar. Uh, let's see if we can get that there done. Uh, like so, like that there, and then I'd be double pressing mouse 4, go up here, double pressing mouse 4, and then that would allow me to sort of aim glide, okay? So after you do the double roll, what you want to do is you want to aim glide, okay? So aim gliding, that's basically whenever you're aiming in midair, you know, you're aiming in midair with your weapon, so you can bring out your, your Lado or something, you're aiming, like so, press the aim button, easy peasy, and then whenever you're doing that aim, what you do is you go into your slide again. And that would basically allow you to reset your combo because we're going to go ahead and jump into the air here and then we just land. You see that that stops our momentum right there. So we wouldn't want that to be happening if we were just sort of jumping in the air and we wanted to land. What we'd have to do is you can either land in an aim glide, like so, or you can land in a slide, which will basically allow you to start your combo over and over and over again. But what you do is you do something like that's here, like so, if you get what I'm saying. So after your rule, you either go into an aim glide or you go into a slide. You feel me? If, if you get what I mean, you know, just just go in here and practice it and make sure that you can sort of complete the course uh, by not messing up that sort of combo if you get what I'm saying. So you can mix it up. You can do like a aim glide into a slide. If you want to aim where you're going more precisely, different things like that there. So it's just all about getting your uh, momentum down and sort of making all that stuff muscle memory. So next up, we have our bullet jumping, like sort of preparing ourselves or preparing, propelling, propelling propelling ourselves up into the air, right? So, wall dash up, jump onto a wall, holding S, and then holding S? What? S? Okay. I, I didn't know that was a thing. That, that's totally wrong right there. Don't even listen to this tutorial, guys, because apparently they mess up your key bindings for you, but whatever. So, um, 
you know, they're basically teaching you how to do this here. So, you know, while we're up, you just sort of go up to it, jump onto it, and just keep on pressing spacebar. Sure, but that's slow and boring, right? What we want to do is we want to crouch and then look up in the air, we're down at the ground, and then press spacebar. And that's going to propel us all the way up here. And then you can go ahead and do your wall running, right? Pretty cool, right? So you can look up, like so, crouch, look up, do your bullet jump. So you just press spacebar uh, to do the jumping. Pretty simple. Or you can look down at the floor and do it like that there as well. So whatever you want to do, just depends where you're at in the map sort of thing. If you're in an air vent, you might want to look down. If you're uh, looking up in like a wide open area, you might want to look up and different things like that there. So here we have wall dashing, which is basically just do this here. You know, basically the exact same thing as running up the wall, except this one is across the wall. Super simple, but we're going to go ahead and do it our own way. So we're going to do the slide slide into the jump, into the roll, into the aim glide, you know, that type of thing. So here you go, and you do this, and then you do this. It allows you to cover a lot of distance right there. So you'd slide, uh, slide, jump, roll, aim glide, slide again, do that there. Sort of propels you forward. It's pretty simple. It's like you're sliding on nothing, and it's uh, pretty cool, right? So you don't even have to touch that wall at all, really, like in reality. Um, if, you're, if you're struggling a little bit with propelling yourself over, you can also use your melee, and then that will allow you to sort of get a little bit more air, like so. But obviously, because we're not like sort sort of super high up, we're gonna fall off there. So can I actually recover from this? Maybe I can. Maybe we can't. Okay, we can. There we go. Easy peasy. So, yeah, you're able to chain your movement together like a lot in this game. It's uh, super awesome, and it's just sort of getting used to it. Really, like I said, you can skip pretty much half this tutorial just by. Um, basically mastering the movement alone. So let's just go ahead, go back to the start, and uh, see how fast we can complete this if you can uh, get this done. And this is also what I recommend you doing as well if you're um, new to the game. Coming into this here little course here and trying to complete it as fast as possible. Just learning the movement and getting the shit done really. And that is uh, pretty much it to be completely honest with you. Um, so other than that, you know, there's nothing else to movement. It's just memorizing it by muscle memory and stuff like that there. And if you have any more sort of questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Uh, message me in Discord. Uh, you know, hit me up whenever I'm streaming, things like that there. This is also a wall running bit. I think you kind of have to wall run there or else you're going to be kind of fucking yourself. And also the zipline bit. Now the zipline bit is um, super interesting. You just kind of go up to it, you press X and then pretty much done but a cool tip with this here is you can also do it when you're below it and kind of just latch onto it like so so if you're falling you want to fast recover and there's a zipline here just press x and there you go super awesome you can also do your bullet jumps and stuff off the zipline pretty simplistic um so yeah another thing i should also mention is the uh, melee off a wall so whenever you're doing your wall latching if you uh, go ahead and wall latch it's going to be something that you're going to have to do so actually a full wall latch bit over here actually so let's go ahead and go to that where's it at where's it at it's all the way over here so this is the wall latch bit so basically you jump towards this platform and then you hold your aim button on it and then whenever you're aiming your hold button on it you can uh your aim button yeah your aim button whenever you're aiming on it you can aim where you want to go so you press shift and then you could uh bullet jump off it sorry hold on so you'd aim press shift and then you can propel yourself off it like so Hold on, maybe I'm feeling this a little bit. There we go. That's it. You just, you know, press shift and uh, your jump button at the exact same time wherever you're aiming. And that will propel you forward to the place that you want to go. Or you can also melee yourself off it by pressing E while uh, you're aiming. And then there you go. Pretty simplistic. Or you can just kind of, whatever. And I just roll off it or whatever you want to do. Completely up to you. It's uh, super awesome. And uh, yeah, the movement is by far like the best part of this game in my opinion. So... Getting movement down is super duper, super duper, 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 super duper important, I guess. Uh, I don't know why I said super duper so much, but super duper important. So we're going to move on and uh, get this parkour tutorial done after those two fields there. And uh, yeah, that should be basically us. Now, being able to parkour super well is going to open up a lot of potential in this game. Like, let's say, for example... Um, the void treasure rooms which you guys have no idea what that is yet but i remember in one of the previous episodes there was an alert which was called find the item treasure that requires you to parkour and saying that you're able to parkour now if you practice it then you'll be able to do that and it's super simple but 
you know, it's whatever. So let's go ahead and take a look at these junction requirements, shall we? So the junction is this here thing down here, and it has all these requirements and stuff. Some of which you might already have completed, some of which you might not have completed, you might have no idea how to get them. Um, but we're going to be covering it in this video. So, the Vor's Prize Quest, we're going to be going to the Venus Junction first, because we have to go here to complete the Mars Junction. Vor's Prize Quest, we've already done. Pretty simple, right? Collect 20 mods. What I recommend doing is, uh, you guys remember, I told you to go ahead and complete all of the uh, little nodes that were flashing blue, apart from this here one right here, because you need an arc wing to do this. We haven't got that yet. So... Basically, what's happening here is you should have all these little knots. So, Cervantes all the way down to Cambria, Gaia, Pacific, Everest, Marie's Bazaar. You should have all these here things done. So, to get these 20 mods, I recommend playing Everest. Now, Everest is an excavation mission, which basically it shoots down a drill from the sky. And the power of this drill, you need to kill enemies who are holding power cells. And once killed, they will drop those power cells and you can use those power cells to, um, you know, basically make the drill keep on going. So, you're defending it and you're giving it power by, you know, giving it the power cells just by running into it. And it's pretty simple. And every time a drill finishes, it takes two minutes for a drill to finish. Um, it's going to give you a reward in the form of a mod, a relic, credits, or endo. Pretty cool, right? So there's no reason not to really play this here. This is by far the best um, farming spot. Super early on in the game. And it's also the best spot for lift relic farming later on in the game. You might not understand what that means now, but later on you definitely will. So, um, keep this here note in mind, Everest on Earth, excavation is for lift relic farming and early mod farming uh, on uh, Earth, so for newer players. Um, so, if any player asks for recommendations on where the, where the farm at the beginning of the game, Everest is what you say. Pretty simplistic, right? Moving on, we have apply for mods to a single Warframe or weapon. Pretty straightforward. You back out of navigation, you go down to your arsenal, over here, and then you would equip four mods at the same time to any weapon. I did it on my scanner. You might have trouble with this if you transmute it uh, in the previous video. If you didn't, this will be a breeze for you because you'll have super shitty mods. Um, but if you transmute it, you have to go out your way to get mods for your melee weapon and maybe even level up, which I'll show you guys how to do as well. Um, but you should have a decent category of mods if you play Everest on Earth, which will allow you to put mods on once the weapon has been leveled up a little bit. As you can see, my scan is ranked 22 right now because I've been leveling up on the spy mission on Earth, which we'll talk about, which also gave us this here mod over here called Volcanic Edge. But we'll talk about that there a little, a little later on as well. So let's go back up to the navigation. Here we go. So for the leveling of your weapons, um, go ahead and play... Cambria. So Cambria is your spy mission, pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, uh, spy missions, super easy to play through. If we take a look also, you'll see that my, my Paris is still level 6, and my Lado is level 14. Now this is because XP is distributed in a certain way in Warframe. So let's say you are um, playing with all your weapons equipped. What's going to happen is all the XP is going to be divided equally between all of your weapons. So you have the Paris, you have the Lado equipped. Every single, um, out of the 100% XP that you earn from killing an enemy with, with whatever weapon is going to be divided equally between all of your weapons. So if you want to level up a weapon faster than the others, let's say you want to level up the Scanna a lot quicker than the other weapons, you take off the Lado, you take off the Parse, and you just play with the Scanna. That way the Scanna is going to be getting all the XP uh, that you get for kills to the weapon itself, which means it's going to level up faster. So that is um, leveling. That's a good quick tip about leveling. So... There we go. So what I do is I would equip the scanner, go to Cambria, and keep on replaying that spy mission over and over and over again until you get to a level that you're happy with and you can equip four mods on. Pretty straightforward. Next up, we have a upgrade any mod to rank two or higher through uh, the fusion process. So what you do, come down here to your modding section, choose a mod that you want to upgrade. So for example, I want to upgrade my vitality. Press it, press fusion. Click this little plus, and then upgrade it to whatever. And there you go. Vitality's been upgraded. And then it increases the stats and easy peasy. So rank to your higher, just upgrade it twice. It's whatever. Super duper easy. And we have that equipped. Let's go ahead and replace those. And then that should be good to go. Pretty sweet. Moving on back up to our thing here. And hover it over it. Defeat free Xmas enemies on Earth. I recommend playing uh, Mariana. 
Mariana, there's going to be an Eximus that spawns in halfway through it, and then there's going to be two at the end. Now, Eximus enemies are different from normal enemies uh, because they have a little red sort of outline around them. That's how you tell a normal enemy from an Eximus. The Eximus have a re little red glowy outline. Might be subtle uh, to see at first, but you'll understand. Because they'll have like weird auras around them or a big cross snow glue bubble or, or whatever. So super easy. And then uh, that's it. And then once you've done all those, you can go ahead and press this. And then once you've pressed it, it's actually in here. And this is a pretty spooky place, so be ready. Be super ready. What's going to happen is you're going to have to kill another Warframe. So you press X. And then what you're going to do with Excalibur is you're going to press 2. Then you're going to press E. And you're going to one-shot him. That's how overpowered Excalibur is. That's, uh, that's pretty much that. So, yeah. And you press X and then that's it done. That was basically like a boss. That was D's version of a boss right there. Um, that was Rhino, the Rhino Warframe. He was meant to be invulnerable to your damage there, but because you um, used your radio blind and made him open the finisher attacks, which basically murdered him. So that was easy peasy. And also here's a cool cutscene. This is the coolest thing you're going to see in the entire game. As you know, that's a lie. There's there's more killer things to come. But yeah, you get a bunch of stuff here. You got um, two elemental mods, which you've seen there, and two blueprints. So these blueprints can be used in the foundry, and uh, that basically allows you to craft things. And then we also unlock Venus, so that's pretty cool. So like I said, guys, um, pretty simple, really. Like I should have gameplay overlaying off uh, the excavation, and I should also have gameplay overlaying off me killing the Xmas. Um, and that should be it. Also, if uh, you've been playing on Earth a little bit, you should have Neuros and you should have the um, resources basically available to you to build the Taxon, which I 110% recommend, although I don't have enough credits. So I'm going to go ahead and go out my way to get those. I recommend playing excavation missions or capture missions to get credits earlier on. Um, definitely go out your way to get those there because the Taxon is going to be a super big help because you get a mod with it called Vacuum, which will suck up things which are around you, which is a nice quality of life thing. So you definitely want that there. And then that is, uh, that's pretty much it. So there's nothing else really to talk about here uh, at this moment in time. So in the next episode, we'll talk about progressing through Venus and uh, what we have to do for there. So we can actually take a look now. Defeat Jackal, which is a boss. Uh, complete 10 waves on a defense, pretty straightforward. Rescue a hostage, basically a, a rescue mission. And defeat 10 Xmas enemies on Venus, which Again, should just be pretty easy on the exterminate node right here. So we'll talk about that there in the next episode. So if we go ahead and press the alert, you can also see the uh, hunt for the Ayatin treasure. So let's go ahead and do that there, actually. And I'll show you guys saying, you know, how to do. Um, oh, never mind. We have to rank up our master rank. So if you are leveling up your weapons, that's another thing we can talk about. Just came up in the alerts. If you are leveling up your weapons, what you'll notice is this little bar starts to fill up. Like I've explained before, you level up your weapons to level 30. And um, once you level those up, um, you're going to get Master XP. So this here one is almost filled up because it's rank 22. The max rank is 30. So the more uh, you level up your weapon, the more Master XP you're going to get from it. And because we leveled up a decent bit, we're going to go ahead and do this Mastery Rank Up test right here. So you press this here, and it's basically just a test um, that you have to do to rank up your profile rank. So you have to have all sort of versions of weapons equipped. So make sure you have your, your Paris and your Kunai equipped here. Oh, nope, maybe not Kunai, Lado. There we go. And then just go ahead, press this here, and then press uh, yes. And this is going to put you into a test, which they're pretty easy. I'm not gonna lie, they are super duper easy. So this here one is basically just kill some bad guys with all your weapons and stuff, which is super straightforward. So you can literally do this one by standing still and aiming. Uh, so here we go. Maybe the Paris is not the best choice for this one, um, but this is only one of, out of the 24 that are currently available right now, so it's whatever. You could obviously do a little bit better in this here one with the Bratton, but I prefer the Paris because, I don't know, I'm just a higher accuracy player in my opinion, so I miss that shot whenever I say that. Feels good, man. There we go. Get his head. So the... Uh, these are the corpus enemies. I am pretty sure you've guys seen these guys before. Here we go. Kill this guy. Again, like I said, literally standing still right here. Notice how we have like over 300 health as well because we upgraded vitality. Pretty worth it. Um, health also scales with your armor. So the more health you have, the more effective HP you have, meaning you're a lot gonna, you're going to be a lot tankier 
uh, really. So that especially comes in handy with uh, frames like Valkyrie and stuff. So I'll have an asset sheet uh, in the description below of other things that you can do while on Earth, which will um, basically just show you everything you can do before progressing onward. Um, there's going to be a few mods and stuff that you can get. Okay, we just got blasted out of nowhere. Gonna be a few mods and stuff that you can get. Let's actually move a little bit because we might die because our shield was down there. Um, mods and stuff that you can get off Everest, like Flo uh, from the Butcher's Tranquil Cleave, which is a mod, pretty rare one at that for uh, Nikanas, which we don't have yet, but we will be getting in the future. Used to be pretty rare. Um, people just kind of give it away like candy now. So that is pretty much our mass rank test done as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can get done super early on Earth, uh, like getting a part for a Warframe, which is pretty special from the spy missions called Ivara. Um, just by playing the spy mission over and over and over again and making sure that you don't get detected if you get all free data caches, which is pretty straightforward, uh, at least in my opinion. You can go ahead and do that there. So playing that Cambria over and over again is super worth it. You can also get dual stat mods from there called, I think one's called Frostbite and the other one is called Volcanic Edge. If it's not called Frostbite, it will be in the asset sheet below. Um, Everest, you can get a mod called Flow, Tranquil Cleave, you can get a bunch of mods from Everest. You can get your Lift Relics, you can get Crimson Dervish, possibly. It's super rare though. Um, but if you do happen to get that there, you're super lucky because that increases your melee damage by 300%. And, um, yeah, so we should be able to do this Maru's Bazaar here. Let's go ahead and do this here. So you press, uh, whatever over here. This is a little place that we're going to here. So you go ahead, you head in here. And then press this. And then we go ahead and we sprint forward. This is like a, a player hub right here. No one is barely ever in this one because it's kind of just a crappy one. Press X and then you say, um... Ayat and Treasure, and she gives you a conversation. I'm looking for Ayat and Treasure. Uh, I'm ready. And then you press play now. And what this is going to allow you to do is go into the void for your first time ever. And the void is probably the best looking place in this game. I'm not going to lie. The void is a super cool place, as you can see, super gold and stuff. And there's a lot of different rooms in this place which give super rare mods, such as this one. This one has containers in here which drop mods there's a mod right there called vaporize um this place is basically mod heaven and you'll have full access to this place later after phobos which will allow you to just keep on coming in here there we go we got a rare mod already called ravage which we definitely like or will definitely need so you can just go ahead destroy all the containers and hopefully get stuff this is an argon this is a rare resource which decays after seven hours of you taking it out of the void. So, yep, that will be in your inventory, but then it'll disappear. So basically what you, what you want to be doing in here is just looking around in the rooms and uh, destroying most, if not all, of, of the containers. Not every single room will have containers which will drop mods. So it's worth maybe not destroying every single container and only in the rooms which are sort of secret or sort of hard to find. That type of thing but this here one um if you play it through maru it's like a guaranteed sort of rare uh treasure room that basically gets spawned in what you'll be able to go into and hopefully get rare mods from so yeah this place is uh basically mod heaven for you if you've never played it before or if you're thinking about playing it so let's go ahead like i said like these guys are so low level, you can kind of just parkour through here, and they won't really affect you. This here room in here is pretty shitty, there's no point even going in that room. If you want, I'll give you guys a better, closer look at it. There is nothing that spawns in here, so you don't even want to bother with in there. Um, obviously the containers spawn in there, but they are containers that don't drop anything. These containers are around here, they don't drop anything, but there's a room, which is secret up here, which drops mods up here. So you want to go ahead and destroy those there, and hopefully get a mod. Um, every single container will drop Ayat and Stars though, which is going to be something that you will definitely need uh, if you plan to play this game long term, because that gives you access to Endo, which allows you to upgrade your mods. If we look around a little bit more, that's a dead end. Um, let's see what else we can find. Doo -doo. This doesn't have any secret rooms in here, that's an Eximus enemy, you can see the little red glow. Let's see. These Doom Orbs, you can destroy the tops of them to make them stop spinning. 
like so, rotation plate, just destroy it. There we are. So, I'm super under leveled for here, because these guys are like level 20. But because we've upgraded our mods like Vitality, these guys really aren't a problem. An elevator. Wait for it. Do, 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 do. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Should be done now. Easy. Okay, we get another room in here. Should be a few containers under this here thing. In here. So just look down at under here. Maybe any containers? I don't know if these things drop anything though. I don't think they do, to be honest with you guys. I've never actually seen a mod drop from that. But yeah, just look around this place. Look uh, to find any sort of rare secret half-hidden rooms, really. And that's all you're really looking for. Nothing in this one. And if you find any, like, secret rooms and stuff, it will hopefully drop mods for you, which will be decent. So this room doesn't have anything, but there are other rooms that connect to this room. That one's a closed door. There'll be a door down below here. That's a dead end as well. Keep on moving forward. A lot of enemies though. A lot of enemies will spawn. That's to be expected. See, that's an open door over there. Which leads into a room down here. As far as I'm aware, this here room is also pretty shitty. So nothing really spawns in here. Head up here again. Uh, there's another decent room here. So this one drops decent stuff as well. As you guys could probably already tell since we got ravaged from it. The, is that a mod? That's the nav segment. We definitely need that there. We'll need those for the future, guys. So if you see nav coordinates, make sure to pick them up. Um, no argon crystal that time. Just keep on progressing. Look on free. Nothing in that room. If I die here, never mind. Good to go. This is the exit, actually. So that means there will only be a few more things. There's an Iathan star again. You get a lot of Iathan stars from the void rooms as well. There we go. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nope. Obviously, it's super hard to tell which uh, containers are going to drop the rare stuff and which aren't. Um, but it's just sort of the rooms you have to memorize. Okay, which room is worth going into? Which room isn't worth going into? Because going in and destroying like every single container and every single room is very time consuming, right? So you want to make sure that you're sort of maximizing... Uh, maximizing your time whenever it comes to okay this is the place you want to go for so this is like a speed course so you got to be on the ball with this um once you hit this here pressure plate pressure plate this is whenever the timing is going to start so it's always random so you're not going to get the exact same one as me and hopefully this door opens reach the end before the door closes is this one over here so all right this is like the laser death trap one so this might possibly kill you if you're not like lucky enough like that there um but yeah, definitely make sure to upgrade your vitality before you come in here. There's also containers. Uh, I don't know if there's containers here. Keep on going free. And then if, well, as soon as you hit this here plate, you're pretty good to go. And then up here will be an Iaton sculpture, which you can put stars into. As you uh, have seen me collecting throughout this, you can destroy those containers. There should be a rare mod there, but there's not. Um, these ones can drop mods. For example, Pistol Gambit drop rare mods they can drop common mods basically random mods um depending on the level of the place that you go to will determine what mods you get i'm pretty sure like you can only get a certain set of mods like there should be like a noticeable pattern like you can only get things like i don't know streamline or something i don't know the exact um the exact things but you know um uh, it's just all down to the level of the place that you're at and the type of room that you get will determine how good or bad the location is. I'm pretty sure you can't get anything from the ones up there either. As far as I'm aware. Where do we get out of here? Over here, this way. So, that is pretty much all there is to it. I just died because of lasers there. Derp. That's my bad. Let's, you can go ahead and destroy those by shooting the laser plates. Like so. Okay, maybe our weapon's just too underleveled right now. But, yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. That's the void. So, you definitely want to be paying paying attention to this place. It's a pretty deadly place because of the traps and stuff. So if you're a newer player, you might want to not come here, but if you're feeling up to the challenge and you see that Marie alert, collect abs and sculpture, then feel free to go for it, you know? Nothing's stopping you, and if you get those mods, then more power to you. Um, like you've seen, this is totally worth it because we've got Ravage, which increases our crit damage with shotguns, which will be super good on 
like let's say for example the Vancor Heck, which is a shotgun we're going to be getting in the future. So, you know, that was a pretty successful run in my opinion. So, that is pretty much it guys. Um, you learned a lot in this episode, might be a lot to take in again, like I said. This will take you back to Marie's Bazaar, so you can just go ahead, exit out of this here, skip the cinematic, and then go ahead, pause the game, go back to Relay, or not, leave, leave Relay, there we go. So, you learned how to parkour, you learned how to get the first junction done, and uh, you learned how to go into the void. Pretty successful episode in my opinion. If you guys enjoyed this one, hit that like button below, and you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.